Welcome to Biz Kids, everybody. We teach business, money, and mindset to kids each week for free on Mondays at 4.30. So for those of you who are new, we're going to give you some quick updates, then we'll be doing today's lesson, and then you guys can share anything you want to share at the end. And as we're doing today's lesson, I want to make sure you have lots of questions to ask our special guest, Jordan, who we'll be introducing in a minute. Okay, so in terms of upcoming special guests, in February, who was here for our stagecoach lesson? Some of you weren't, but some of you were. We're going to be I've doing... I've seen clips on TikTok. Yeah, you've seen it on TikTok. Great. So we're going to be doing a continuation of our lesson with Stagecoach. And we're going to be talking about how to write a pop song. And we're going to be talking about how you can be an entrepreneur, even in the music industry. So we'll be doing that in February. Now, some of you have seen Mila's song, Goddess, her rap song. Some of you have seen it on our TikTok feed. Who's seen yeah, Goddess? Five. Yeah. So we are going to be making very exciting news, guys. We're going to be making Goddess into a proper song and a pop video with Stagecoach. And we're going to be releasing, and this is where we need all of your help. We're going to be releasing different versions of the song Goddess. And we want all the kids, your actual biz kids, to vote on which version of the song Goddess is going to be made into a pop song. So guys, all you need to do is keep your eyes on our feed and we'll probably be going live as well. Let me just let some more people in, hang on. On Friday. On Friday or Thursday and playing three different versions of the pop song for you to choose from. With Mila's reaction. With Mila's reaction. No, have you got your hand up? Do you mean you're gonna do this on TikTok? Yeah. I don't have TikTok. I know, we need to get you on. It'll be on YouTube as well. No, you're on YouTube, aren't you? Yes, it will be on YouTube, on our channel on YouTube as well. So it will be across okay. both channels, okay? Because no, we definitely want to know what version of the song you like the best, that's for sure. Because Noah's been here for so long. Okay, so last week we learned about the secret powers of influence and how we can influence people's decision. Has anyone, did anyone try this influencing somebody else? Where, no, you haven't tried. Where's George? Evie, did you try influencing someone? I tried influencing someone to, I think it was, I can't remember, but oh, I definitely yeah. tried. Did you succeed, Evie? Oh, yeah. You did? Yeah. Evie, that's brilliant. Did you use anything of the tactics we learned from last week? Yeah. Evie, that is fantastic. Well done. That's Evie demonstrating. I think I... I was at school the other yeah. day and someone asked me, I swear I heard that you ran a bracelet business. I said, yeah. And he said, can we order three phone charms? And I said, yeah, but actually right now, if you order two, it is £1.50 for both. But she said, that's a really good deal if you ask me. It's £1.50 for a charm bracelet. And then and then they said, yeah, can we order three? And I said, yeah, three would be £2. So I have a big sale on that. So yeah, three. And then they ordered their stuff. And um, yeah, and that's how it went. Well done, Evie. That's great work. I'm really glad to see you using the things that you've learned in Biz Kids. Okay, so for today's lesson, we have a very special guest, Jordan Lansdowne. Can everybody see Jordan on the screen? Jordan, give everybody a wave and everyone yeah. wave back. And Jordan's here to tell us her story about how to start a fitness brand and an active wear brand. So we will be handing over to Jordan in a second. All you need to do is just write some notes down of any questions you want to ask Jordan. And if you have any questions, just put your hands up and ask as we go. And remember, there's no such thing as a silly idea or a bad idea or a silly question or a bad question. Just put your hands up and unmute yourself so that we don't all shout at Jordan at once. Okay, so Jordan is the founder of a fitness wear brand called J Lux Fit, which uses online influencers to help her promote her brand. And she is a huge brand on TikTok and Instagram. And Jordan is gonna tell her story now. And like many great online brands, it was all created from Jordan's own personal experiences, which is exactly what some of you are doing with your bracelet businesses. Okay, Jordan, over to you. <laughs> Hello everyone, nice to meet you all. So I'm just gonna go through a little bit about how I started and why I started. So early on, mainly throughout primary school, I really struggled with my weight and I was unfortunately bullied for a long period of time during primary school. I didn't fit in. 
into crowds. And for me, that was really hard. I think this is, I think it can be quite common and social media wasn't really a big thing for me at that point. I didn't have a phone when I was in primary school. So it was all in person. So that probably seems crazy for you guys to think about that. But we didn't, I think maybe I had a Nokia to phone my mum and that was about it. But <laughs> that definitely wasn't until the end. Um, so yeah, throughout school, I loved sports, absolutely loved sports. I'd done football, hockey, and I played up for years up to county sports as well. I always took part in every single last bit of sports that I could. Even though I struggled with my weight, I continued to do that. I wonder if you guys can check which one hey. I am on the picture. Which one are you, Georgia? We're looking now. <laughs> which one do you think? I don't know. What did you didn't have blonde hair at school then? No, well, which one do you think? No, it just unmute yourself. Um, the one ne- in girl in the middle, the one next to her. What this one? Yeah. Can you, can you see my mouse? That one or this one? The other one, the first one. This one. Okay, Toby. Yeah, William, well. what one do you think? I think it's the one on the the far left. Here, this one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Jordan, tell us which one. I'm the one with the pink hockey stick. Here. Yeah. This oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's quite a blurry photo. I must have been maybe about 13 there. Wow. Okay, amazing. Let's go to the next slide. Carry on, Jordan. Yeah, absolutely. So I was massively independent at school. I started working from the age of, of 11, 11, 12, I would say. I, stick, I started doing skittles. Like I was sticking up skittles in a skittle alley locally because I actually wasn't old enough to do a paper round at that point, even though I really wanted to do one, because that was the thing back in when I did things. I don't know if they're still around, actually. Um, They are in my area. Are they? Yeah. Okay. So I know that you it's changed a little bit now with age ranges, but sticking Mm -hmm. up, you could do it from the age of 11. So that's what I used to do in the evenings. And I'd do anything to try and do, to basically do some work. And then... Actually, in school, I took business studies and that for me was quite a a really good chance to get into business. And I found that what we had a couple of different different things that we were doing. I actually started selling fudge in my school and I actually earned loads and loads of money being able to do that. We couldn't quite believe it. I would make it at my nan's house. Sorry, I think I've skipped slides, haven't I, a little bit? That's all right. Is this the fudge slide? I think it's the next one. Look, here we are. Yes. So... I actually decided to start selling at farmers markets as well. So because I was in school, I was able to outreach to my local farmers market. And because it was a school-based project, I actually managed to get a free stool, the farmers market. And what we did is we sold it on the farmers market. I managed to rope a few of my friends in to get them selling. And one of the teachers even joined. And it was absolutely amazing. And so we, we did that for a period it of about four weeks because we could only get in every other week yeah and that was super fun and there was another project that I got involved with selling honey as well which was absolutely amazing so it's always have been my a question no have you got a question go ahead when we when you were bullied at school did you stand up for yourself um I did when I got to secondary school but at primary school I really struggled why was that, George? And how did that feel at primary school? I think that I don't really know why I didn't. It's not that I didn't stand up for myself. I think I just didn't want the hassle. I'd just rather go off. I was really independent. I would just go off on my own in the playground and I would just walk around doing my own thing. I wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me too much. And and I spent a lot of time with the adults as opposed to with the children and I think I must listen to them around things as well and we had a bit of a dugout what was called the dugout where you could go and like exchange toys at lunch times and things and I would always help out in the dugout because it would be like something fun to do. Brima have you got a question? What tactics do you need to start a fitness program? What tactics Brima? Yeah. Okay, let's go on to the next, let's carry on, because I'm sure Jordan's going to be covering that as the business, as she goes through more through her business story. Wait, we've got more questions. Evie? 
I stand next to the teachers at lunchtime and stuff and I help out because I find it better then because there's some girls at my school that if you interact with them, you're probably going to start a fight. So I just decide to stay out of it. I think that's a really that's good... Sometimes good the best thing to, thing to do. do. Absolutely. I think that's a really good idea. And obviously it shows that you're independent and the fact that you're already thinking about doing that and, and not getting involved because at the end of the day, it's only going to be worse off. So that's a really good idea. Great, let's go on to the next slide. So you were standing fudge at school, but then what happened, Jordan? So I've always been massively, I always wanted to be in business, which was why I took business at GCSE. I was also very creative. So I took textiles. I loved fashion. I loved clothes. And I actually made quite a few items throughout school, which I love doing. But I always had this thing. My mum would take me to the hairdressers and I would love going. And I just felt, they, the fact that they created such like cool, you could go in one person almost, come out like another. And I always felt like that was really cool. And my mum always supported it, but my dad didn't. He was like, that isn't a proper job. <laughs> but, it, but I did it and I loved the creative mm -hmm. flair that hairdressing gave me. It was absolutely amazing. It was really fun. And you get to speak to so many people every day. And then what happened, Jordan? So I wasn't actually very well for quite a long period of time and it was undiagnosed for about two and a half years. And then unfortunately it started to affect the muscles in my body. So I wasn't able to stand for long periods of time without fainting. And then it started to affect my, my eye. I initially lost a load of weight and then I gained it back on. And then, yeah, my eye was the most prominent thing that was noticeable. I had a lot of shakes. I couldn't hold the scissors anymore properly because my hands would shake. And finally got a diagnosis that I had a thyroid condition and had to step away from hairdressing for that reason. Um, well, and children, then, that's a lot. How old are you? About 20 at this point. No, I was younger than that. I left school at 15 because I'm quite young for my age. And I, was, and I was a qualified hairdresser by the age of... I did that in less than... I started my apprenticeship as soon as I left school, literally the, the day after. So I didn't take a summer holidays. So I let, and I finished my hairdressing by the time I was 17. So I was already trained and working. So it was when I was that, when I was that age, 17. Wow, I mean, that's really young. James, you got your hand up. Unmute yourself, James. I started a business with my friend who's who we call an AI spy who we call an AI spy because he knows everything that you can't know about it and we started it on Wix the company Wix Studios wow, yeah, so that's really cool that's amazing you need to send us some info about that Annie what's your question when you first started selling fudge did it straight away go like amazingly well did you make uh, loads of money on your first day no it took a little bit of time I had to I had to get it out there that I was doing it so what I actually did is I went round on so we had tutor groups I don't know if that's still a thing but we I would go round in the morning and I would go to the different tutor groups because it was agreed with my tutor prior and I would go round and actually ask people if they wanted to buy it in like the 20 minutes before we started like the actual school lessons so I had to get it out there first. And then that's how people then got to know about it. And then they would then, uh, similarly to what, was it Noah that you were doing the, the bundles, then started Toby, selling, Toby. Oh, Toby, sorry, bigger bundles to people because they wanted to buy it in bulk. And then that was better, obviously, because the people were buying more of it. Evie, what's your question? I have two questions. First of all, I get like that you stood up for yourself and in secondary but I what I don't get is why you why people bought from you even though they bullied you and also my other question is let's say someone asked you for a one-off haircut and you still had your skills would you do it do you think you still have the skills to hairdress absolutely yeah I do I do now and again do friends and family if I fancy it I still <laughs> love hairdressing honestly it's I, I would do it any day of the week it's such a fun people come in and you speak to them and you get such an insight into their life and it's a really great business. And I think I would probably still be in it, but I've always wanted to have my own salon. I never wanted, I wanted to be running the place. I didn't want to be doing like the nitty gritty. Let's go on to the next slide. 
so you've just oh Jordan this is you when you gained weight then is it yeah so that that was probably the only photo that I could find that was clear enough for when I gained weight yeah so that was when I gained I was about a size 16 to 18 UK size there but you can see my face is it's dramatically but you can also see I I hid my eye so in any photo in at that stage I would hide my bad eye with my fringe wow okay so that you couldn't see it so carry on Jordan so yeah I once I got all recovered and on medication which has since been absolutely fine I had my thyroid removed and on medication now and all good for the last four years I think now I was, I really needed to get back on to doing fitness. I love sports. So I still did it, but I just couldn't do it to the extent of what I used to do it. And what I struggled with is when you're in school, you do a lot of sports and like I played hockey and football. And when you get to maybe it was my twenties at that point, I didn't really know what to do. And it sent, and it felt like the most sensible option was to join a gym. Everyone else really, I hadn't explored any, other classes at that point. So I turned up at the gym extremely nervous and with not a lot to wear because nothing really fitted me very well. Yeah, the only gym wear that I really could find was like a sports bra that was from Marks and Spencer's and it looked like something my nan would wear. It wasn't attractive. It The colours were quite quite something and it didn't make me feel very nice to say the least and I didn't really un I think the biggest thing for me was that I didn't really understand why there wasn't options because although I was classed as overweight I didn't feel like I was any different to anyone else and I didn't feel like I shouldn't have the option to be able to go to the gym just because I might have been slightly bigger did someone have a question sorry yeah, we see you've got lots of hands up. Annie, what's your question? This is a different slide, but did people ask you about your eye and why you were, why in pictures you were always doing the same pose? Yes, all the time. It was horrible. I hated it. And any person that saw me would stare at me in the street, down the road, wherever I was. Anyone that then spoke to me would, it, it would be the first thing that anyone would ask. And I know that in BizKid, some of you have also felt different and that you don't necessarily fit in or the same as everyone else. Who's felt that? I know some of you have here. So you can see how it, even if you feel that way, you can overcome it in life. What's your next question? And what did you say when people ask you about your eye? Did you tell them the truth or? I did. Yeah, absolutely. I told them the truth. I think that's the best thing to do because then people start to understand what you're going through. And for me... I knew that obviously at the start, I didn't know what it was. And then when I did know and obviously got answers, I was able to explain a little bit more about the condition that I had. I think the hardest part was you have to, I had to go through a period of waiting for the operation, knowing I didn't know if I could have it because sometimes it could just go back on its own. The eye could have just reverted back to normal, but mine unfortunately didn't. It was that kind of waiting period between that, which was hard because I didn't know if I was going to have surgery or I didn't know if I would wake up the next day and it would be normal again. Jordan, I know there's lots of hands up, but we'll go through the slides and come back to the hands as well. I think just keep your questions written down, guys. Jordan, tell us how you then decided to create your own brand. Yes. At that point, I was I didn't understand. Like I said, I didn't understand why there wasn't ultimately active wear out there for my size because I just didn't get why that wouldn't be available in this day and age and so at that point I wanted to design something I used my textile skills back from school and thought you know what I can probably do this I can definitely I had a bit of time on my hands in the evenings I was working full-time at the time and thought how can I start a clothing brand what can I do? So I literally used Google and I Googled how to start a clothing brand and a lot of stuff came up <laughs> and I sat there for hours and days and months and it took about nine months production time and research time before I actually launched my first collection. Um, as you can see, this is one of, one of my, that was actually my second collection this drawing was from. I was actually at my nan's for tea. I have a really close relationship with my nan and I always go and make a tea every week. And I was at my nan's and the tea was cooking. I was sat on a stool in the kitchen and 
I really wanted to design a jumper but that was loose at the bottom because being slightly bigger, I didn't want something that hugged me too much. I wanted it to be loose so that it was it didn't fit too tight. But I still wanted it to look like a, a sweatshirt type thing that I could wear in the gym that I would feel covered up, but not but not too swamped in. And then I'd pass that on to the factory at that point. I didn't even have a designer. I would just pass it on to the factory and ask them to create it. Right, we've got some hands up. Malika, have you got a question? Yeah, so it was about your art. So what? So if you would tell people about why you were covering it, then why did, if you say it so openly, then why did you feel like you needed to cover it if you would tell people anyway? I suppose just confidence. It was just confidence and I suppose I would rather people not ask about it. So I tried to cover it so that they didn't ask. But if they did ask, you'd be like, oh, but okay, I suppose I'll answer because you've asked type thing. Yeah, exactly that. But it was, you couldn't, my fringe didn't go quite across. You could, if you came up, to, you would be able to notice it straight away. Okay, next question. Evie, what's your question? And then we'll come to James, then Noah. My question was about, you know, now, do you think that whoever bullied you, I'm not aiming this at them, by the way, do you think they'll ever reflect and think, I wish you would have been a friend now because I could have, I do my business. I used to have a business with my friends, but she decided to be mean to me and everything. So I kicked her out of my business. And then I came, I think I came successful yeah. my business and I think she wanted to join again do I do you think anybody would look back on what they did to you and maybe think I wish I could have been like so I could support like your business I think potentially yeah there are people that buy from me now that did bully me in school and that's a good thing isn't that's it thing. absolutely yeah it's amazing and I think we've grown up I think people are so different when in school to what people are now. And it's not a long period of time. So people do and th people change and people's opinions change. And I think it's it, I don't hold I don't hold grudges against those people that bullied me. I think you can always forgive and forget. Great advice. Amelia, did you have a question? I thought I saw your hand up. I'm not sure now. Did you have a question? Uh, Amelia. Um yeah, but I forgot it. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, James. I've got two questions. Was your school a girl's school only? No. And my second one is my dad runs a hair salon. Ah. Yeah, James's dad is a pretty famous hairdresser, actually, Jordan. So my, you're in esteemed company. My oh. uncle's fa more famous, though. Oh, yeah, his uncle is actually more famous. That's true. Um, uh, I love hairdressing. I loved it. I wish, I, honestly, it was it was amazing. So fun. Okay, Noah, your question? I have two. Okay. First one, would people, like, support you when you went to the gym or would they just carry on being me? Uh, I didn't really get any questions about it. I think... I just went to the gym. I didn't really, I don't think people didn't support me. Nobody really, some of my friends would go to the gym, but no one really had much. An, I don't, not that I know that they had an opinion of it. My mum was very supportive and family were very supportive of me going because it's good for you. What's your um, next question, Noah? Can I show something at the end? Yes, you can show yes. something at the end. Okay, so let, I know there's more questions. We'll come back to them. Jordan, your very first collection, is this it? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Don't worry. Yeah, so in, in 2020, August 2020, we launched our first collection. This was a four-piece collection of two colours. It was the blue set that was shown on the screen laid flat a minute ago. So that was the one, that this one. It was a matching set. It was really simple. My partner, who's now my husband at the time, said, keep it really small don't go trying to do too many things. Make sure you've got the technical aspect in place first, which the technical aspect was, one, it needed to be supportive, and two, the leggings needed to not fall down when I was running or trying to 
do a bit of a squat or a jump squat or hit workout. So for me, it was super important that the technical fabric components worked well. And we did two colors, a black, which is just a plain, obviously easy color everyone wanted and a, a slightly steely blue, which was the one that we saw, which we thought it was quite in fashion at that point, And I still think it is quite neutral. And you only sold 10 items? On our first, no, on only on our first launch day. Oh, okay. So you were happy, yeah? Yeah, I was so happy. I couldn't okay. quite believe it. That's incredible. Okay, so tell us a bit about those early days then. Yeah, so the early days, it was just me. I was working full-time and I was running JLux Fit on the side of my full-time job. I learned how to create a website. I initially did it on Squarespace and then I moved over to Wix and then I'm now on Shopify, which is mainly in a product-based e-commerce business. Website builder, again, they're all super easy to use. And I just learned by doing YouTube. I followed people on YouTube and then I watched it and then I'd do a bit and watch it and do a bit, which, yeah, that's how I learned to do all of it, really. The hardest bit for me was finding really good manufacturers. And I think one thing that I would definitely say to all of you is, build relationships with people because relationships are really key to to having success for especially partnerships with suppliers from the get-go always treat them like you're going to work with them really long term because you'll get benefits really quickly by doing that and I was really lucky that one of the suppliers that we're that we still work with we worked with pretty much from from our second collection because we and now they're offering so much better terms three years down the line because we bought we built such a good relationship with them. Amazing. So did you hear? So most of our most of these guys are making and selling their own stuff, but some people like Toby are now sourcing products from wholesalers. So remember that the relationship is super important. There's so many hands up. Let's do two questions. Holly and Marnie. <laughs> Holly, go ahead. Um, how did you overcome the bullying? I don't think I really did overcome it in a sense. I just got on with it. I just thought it's not worth my time. I'm focusing on me. I'm, I was independent and I wanted to, I was, like I said, I was in the dugout space doing that kind of thing. I just tried to get through those years of, of school, working hard, focusing on my work and and then also enjoying the time with my true friends because I, although I got bullied, I still had other friends. Amazing. And Marnie, what's your question? Yeah. Do you have any men's wear or is it just women's? Just women's at the moment. Great. Okay. So we'll come back to questions. So you talk about networking as well, Jordan. That's part of what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, absolutely. So I worked in the corporate world alongside my, alongside running JLux initially. And networking was a big part of my career then, building relationships with people. And when I was networking and I still network now, the biggest thing was you can really get so much knowledge from someone in five, 10, 15, 20 minutes. And so I would always focus on taking snippets, like you are all doing today. You've come on this lesson and you've spent the time out of your day to learn from ultimately all of the other amazing people on here. Doing that consistently really helps you to build up your knowledge and so I basically found loads of people that I knew were in my space a little bit. And I would ask them if I could take them out for a coffee. And then I'd and then I'd basically just ask for their advice and help. And they would tell me and I would really hone in the sponge and take all their information. Great. Let's go to the next slide. There's the sponge. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> Okay, Jordan, so what, which, what, oh, you've got a question. What's this picture? This is a picture of me, actually. I was modeling a collection in, I don't, I've got short hair there. I was modeling one of our influencer collections. So this was one of our influ big influencer collections. So just to give you a bit of an overview on JLux Fit, I soon started to realize that ultimately I was my target audience of that customer because the problems that I was solving was for myself. So I knew I needed to find other people like me that had an audience already. 
And that ultimately was going to be influencers because influencers, are, obviously you probably all know what an influencer are. And you talked about that last week in the session. Thanks so about influencers last week. Yeah, exactly. So they helped me to really grow my brand. I would basically outreach them on Instagram and say, can I send you some of my products? Would you post it? And when I started doing that, the brand really started to grow. But I, the most important thing is that I only outreached influencers that shared the same values as what I did and had the same market of people that were interested in my products. For example, people that were interested in, in active wear or people that were interested in going to the gym or people that were interested in losing weight, those types of people would be the people that I would then outreach. Okay, a couple of questions. Annie, what's your question? How much do you do your active wear for? So it ranges, but a pair of leggings is £42. Are you thinking of buying some? <laughs> okay, who else? Amelia, have you remembered your question? Yeah. During this process, was your parents supportive? My mum, yes. My dad, no. Okay. <laughs> What did you, what, why, what happened? My dad's self-employed, so he knows the struggles of, of having a business, I think. And he didn't want me to, I think he was always worried when he didn't, he wanted me to have as what he would class as a normal job. He, even though he didn't go to university, he didn't get one GCSE and didn't have a normal job. He started selling coal driving at the age of 12 so he was a bit he is an entrepreneur he's a true he's a through and through sales guy my dad just I think I don't know I just don't think he thought that it was so, it is a saturated market but he didn't see how I would be able to do it but what did your mum think my mum was like just go for it amazing he didn't really know what I was doing I don't think and are these some of the types of influences that you've worked with these are just some of our models from our community. So these are people that follow us on Instagram that we do model calls where we basically ask our community if they'd like to come and do a photo shoot with us. So we get them hair and makeup and they come and they do the photo shoot and they go away and absolutely feel amazing. And so these two people were part of our, were part of our, one of our latest photo shoots. This is and one of our experiences. This is one of our influencers. So, so basically, we were talking about this last week, George. You can work with influencers, small influencers, or really big ones with millions of followers. And everyone thinks they want to work with really big ones with millions of followers. What have you found? I found that the smaller influencers are definitely better for us. I think you have to have, I think it may, massively depends on the business. But I also think the biggest thing is staying true to your core values and making sure that influencer reflects the business's core values and also your values as well as a person. And as long as they match your target audience and have people that follow them, that are also your target audience. So I would, if you are starting a business, I'd hi, I don't know if this is something that you would do, but I would highly recommend building out your customer kind of profile, your avatar, think of them as a custom as a kind of person and start describing what they look like what they're interested in what their age group is any hobbies that they have whether they're interested in sports tv the kardashians whatever and actually start building out that that personal profile so then when you look for influencers that you want to work with with your business you can say I need to find this particular person as an influencer. Let's have a couple of questions. Lily, did you have your hand up? I think you put it down. We'll come back to you. We've got Noah. What's your question? What were the names of your friends to help make the business or did you do it alone? I did it alone. Uh, what were the names of your friends in that photo though? That was just at my school. That was my school hockey team. Uh, okay. Evie, what's your question? My question is, what age do you have to be to come and work with you? Because if you ask me, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I'd love for you to come and spend the day with me. Oh, Evie will, Evie will hold you to that, Jordan. She, <laughs> she literally will. 
Right, Evie, we'll pick that up afterwards. Lily, what's your question? What's your brand called? J Lux Fit. This is it here, Lily, J Lux Fit. Check it out on TikTok if you're on TikTok. Okay, so the next thing you did was once you work with influencers was create collections with them. What does that mean? Can you tell the kids what that means? Of course. Once we started working with an influencer, we decided quite quickly that they were bringing in quite a lot of sales. We wondered how we could work together with the influencer to bring a collaborative, sorry, is that collection that they actually designed with us. So they would actually come in to the office, we would sit there and design a collection that they loved with them. And then we would bring that whole collection and vision and design to life. And then what we would do, we would then sell that online. Sell that online. And the first one sold out in an hour, Jordan. Yes, it was crazy. I couldn't quite believe it. What What does that feel like? I would. I remember being sat on my living. I was sat on my living because at this point we were still packing orders. I think from home. No, was I? Yeah, I was still packing orders from home at this point. So I was sat there in my living room on the floor, and I just. I was saying to to Jake, my partner, and I was. I couldn't believe it. I honestly couldn't believe it. I was sat there like crying. Oh, it was an amazing feeling. It was. It was because. You work so hard on something and then for people, you never really know if if people are going to like it and you, I'd never done it before. So I took a huge risk. But the influencers also promoted the products of their community at the same time, did they? Yes. So that's the benefit of using influencers is that they will promote it to their community, which then hopefully what happens is their community then follow you. So they, you basically get, imagine my community and their community, you pick the people from their community and put them in your community because they're coming on over. And then that means your followers grow and your community grows. Who's ever bought something that they've seen an influencer promoting for a brand? Every, well, so all of you have, William, what have you bought that an influencer's promoted? I think, uh, does a YouTuber technically count as an influencer? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That means I bought a lot of things. <laughs> so you to be honest, Mo, if you look at if you look into my house, like half the things there, a YouTuber has influenced. But the thing is, I normally buy them before they actually start advertising. Oh, William, you're ahead of the trends then. That's the amazing. thing is, what I found commonly with most YouTubers is when they, when they they like. So let's say there's a British or like a European thing. And let's say I let's say it's an air up. If I bought an air up, I bought an air up, and then like six months later, American YouTubers start advertising it. Oh, this is better. It took that whole time for them to actually start the trend to America from Europe. Wow! So I can see lots of other hands up for that. Hey, Lily, what have you bought that an influence has influenced you to buy? A air up bottle. The air up bottle was massive with influencers. Mm -hmm. Annie, what have you bought that influencers influenced you to buy? Toothpaste. Toothpaste, the purple toothpaste. The Who purple else has bought the purple smile. tooth? Purple high smile toothpaste. Who else has bought that? Because yes, I yes. don't have the purple one, one, but I'm on my second bottle. Is it any good? Is it? No, good? it's really good. So good. It's quite good. My favorite is watermelon. That has like different flavors, so you can get like a coconut one. It's not like the advert, Jordan. I'll tell you what, who yeah, has bought a exactly. Stanley Cup? Who's bought a Stanley Cup? Me. That, I, I guarantee an influencer um, influenced you to buy that. Actually it, was, actually, it was gifted to me. The, the influencer might have influenced the person who bought it for you. <laughs> so Jordan was using influencers to promote her brand and also getting her community involved in the modeling and using real customers for fashion shoots. And Jordan, there's quite a lot of kids in the chat nominating themselves as models, just so you know. <laughs> if, you ever, if you ever want any younger models, Me. you know where to come. Yeah. <laughs> if you bring out a teen or tween range, you know where your models are. Absolutely. Okay, so Jordan, where's the business at now and what are your plans for the future? We're still only online, so we only sell online via our website currently. We're currently growing at a rate through our influence. We have 
six more capsule collections dropping this year with with influencers which we're really excited about and we're also starting to look at other products in the athleisure niche because we have a really high returning customer rate because our customers really love our stuff so they want to buy more from us so we're actually expanding our product range to include more products because the cost to acquire a new customer is higher than the cost to retain an existing customer, especially with the community that we've built. We've got like a group WhatsApp chat where everyone chats to each other, our customers. We're doing a big 5K run around here for charity, which our customers are all getting involved in. We're really, we find our community the probably the biggest thing for us that we spend nurturing. So this year for us, it's, it is about continuing to nurture, but also we really want to grow on TikTok this year. So we're trying out some new things, trying out some trends. We do a lot on, we're, our following is primarily Instagram, as you, you can probably see. We've got um, nearly 33,000 on Instagram, but on TikTok, we're slightly lower. So we really want to grow our, grow our TikTok community this year. Some of these kids know quite a lot about TikTok, so they might be able to make some suggestions when we get to the end of the lesson. Okay, Jordan, that's amazing. Thank you so much. There's so many hands up. Who's got a question for Jordan? Let me just stop screen sharing so that we can see you all. Um, okay. Malachi, you go ahead, Malachi. I have a podcast and I am always looking for influencers to come on. But even if I approach the smaller influencers, they're always asking for ten, twenty thousand pounds. Wow! It, what? How? What would you class a small influencer? Like seven thousand followers. Oh, really? And they ask for that much? Yeah, I follow this. I don't know if anybody watches the nursery nurse on TikTok, Charlotte. No, no um, you about to tell us her prices. But she would. But I was like, she's got. I know, like a hundred k followers, and that's. I don't think that's a lot for TikTok. And like, even her, like when she was just starting up, I said, "How much would you be charging?" We'd be charging five k for her. Wow, I think. What I would recommend doing is I would suggest speaking to them, explaining why you started your podcast and then really show showing them the passion that you have and the reason why you want them on the podcast and you think it would be beneficial and make it really personal when you outreach them and explain why you love them and why you think they're great and why you think they'd be a great fit to come on your podcast and just say you don't, I would just explain you don't have the budget at the moment to spend out, be open and honest with them and just say, but you would love if there was any opportunity that even if they could come on for, for 15, 20 minutes, just, and you never know. I would think about the way that you're speaking and outreaching them so that they, so that it becomes more personal. Does that make sense? Yeah, do you have any ideas of growing social media? Like, I know that, like, we don't have long, but do you have any tips on that? I would research SEO on TikTok. I think that's quite big. From my personal brand, that's one of the biggest things that I'm looking into at the moment is SEO-related growth. So you grow through ranking on keywords. Yeah, and I yeah. Right. So SEO might sound a bit complicated, but it's essentially trying to get your TikToks to rank in the same way as things rank in Google. There's Is lots it like search engine optimization? Yeah, search yeah. engine. And there's lots of people on TikTok explaining how to do that. Okay, let's go around the questions. Phoenix, what's your question? How much money have you made from your brand? Today? Yeah. Just under half a million. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. Twenty-five. Incredible. And when did you actually, sorry, when did you start like actually selling? August 2020, the 28th of August was my day that I went live. 2020. Wow. Okay, next question, Evie. What is your smallest size of clothing? Because I'm size eight in adults. I was wondering if I could buy something. Yeah, we our smallest is a size six. So we go from oh. size six to 28. Okay, that's good. 
And do you oh, know, is there a shortage of inclusive activewear brands? Is it still that people who are different sizes find it hard to buy activewear, even nowadays? There's, diff- there's definitely more people doing it on the market and it has become a lot better, which I'm absolutely thrilled about. But there is a shortage around how those pieces fit and if they fit well. So they might size up to an XL or a 2XL, but they might not fit right. And we spend months and months doing different fits on different body shapes. So we'll bring loads of people in and get them to try the item based on their body shape and size before we actually launch that product. So just to give you an example, it takes us about eight months, six to eight months to actually bring a product from design to finalize on the website, a new product. Okay, who else got a question? Annie, what's your question? How do you choose who's going to be your models? Because there must be so many. Yes, Um, there is a a lot. What we do is we ask everyone to normally comment on a post and we ask them the reason why they want to be a model. And then we'll filter that down and find the best reasons. And then we'll bring up all of their, uh, and we'll do a little call or they might come in if they're local and we have a chat with them and then, and then we pick off of that. And does it, do the customers must love being models? Honestly, it's amazing. People, one girl has has got a model contract off of being seen because she's modelled for us twice and she actually got approached by a model agency. Wow. Okay, last few questions. Noah, what's your question? It's not a question. I'm I'm just wondering if I can now show the things I made. Oh, yeah, let's just do the last questions, um, Noah, and then we'll come back to you. Mila Silver, have you got a question? Your hand's up. You still go to the gym? I do, yes. I go to the gym and I also run. I ran a half marathon last year for charity and I also do Pilates. Amazing. Annie, you've got another question? I know this is a weird question, but are you in your office right now? I am, yes. (laughs) (laughs) And do we have any more questions before Noah's going to show us what she's been up to? Okay, so before Noah goes ahead, can we all say a massive thank you to Jordan for coming today? All of you to check out her brand, J-Lux Fit, on, t- on TikTok. And keep an eye out for her post. Also, Jordan, there's lots of people on TikTok saying they want to be models. Keep oh. an eye out for her post where she asks the models. Do you do that on Instagram, Jordan, or on TikTok or on both? Yeah, mainly on Instagram because it's easier just to keep a hold on it. So if you follow me on Instagram, that's where we'll do those. All right, so guys, follow her over there. Yeah. No, you want to just show us before we wrap today's lesson what you've been making. Okay, so I made loads of jewellery, but I also have an exciting news. So you know Revolution, the makeup brand? Yeah. So my dad works right next to their office, and he's going to apply me to try and help them, like, through the summer holidays. That's amazing, though. Amazing. That's very young to be going into a company and doing work experience. You're going to have to be very brave, but I know you can definitely do that. Uh, Hopefully. Also, so I have quite a few things I made. So I made these earrings, except I didn't make the actual bow. I made like the bells on it. Wow, Noah, you're really improving your design. Where did you get the bows from? The bows, I didn't get them from, I bought them. You bought them. That's how jewelry's made, Noah. People do piece stuff together. Then I added the little bells in this one as well. Oh, oh wow, bells. No, no. Not yeah, no, I think that is oh. a bell. Wait, let's pin Noah so we can see her bigger <laughs> pin. There she is. Yeah, look, that's lovely, Noah. Then I made this bracelet. That's really wow, that's amazing. very good knot tying. Did you tie all those knots? Yes, but it was wow. That requires a lot yeah, of patience. This necklace. No, you're going to have to do a stall when the weather gets better. That's super trendy. And this one, which basically says, Happy Hamster Dog Mermaid. <laughs> In charms. In charms. Well done, that's brilliant. You're getting super creative. Oh, and also I made these little cards, which like, for example, I have a donut one and I'm trying to make a game worth points. Oh, you're making a game? 
Ooh. Hang on, let me just pin you again. How do I pin? Where, where's it gone? Oh, I, for some reason I can't see you. In, oh, here we are. I've got you. You're making a game, Noah. Yeah, I'm trying to at least. Very creative, guys. That's very creative. Well done. Everyone, that's the end of today's lesson. Who enjoyed hearing from Jordan? Give us a hands up. We will say thank you so much to Jordan. 